Hello, drawing. I wanted to show you how to digitally color a file. Now, this could be something that you want to do. I was kind of thinking of your two-point perspective drawings, but this is optional. Uh, just, just wanted to give you information about how to do it. First off, I'm using this program called Photopea, and it works a lot like Photoshop does. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, this is a free um, web-based editor that you can use to edit your pictures. So if you don't have access to Photoshop right now, this is a good option. First off, we need to open up an image. And I found this one. I thought it would work pretty well with coloring. And you got to realize there are just so many approaches to this. I'm going to show you a couple ways, at least that I color files or images. But um, you'll probably figure out your own way to do it. First off, at least for the way that I'm going to approach this, I want this to be black and white, and I want to make sure that I have really good separation between my light and my dark values. So to do that, we're going to go into Image, Adjustments, and then we're going to turn this black and white. Don't worry about all this. Um, this is for if you're working with a color image. It's how um, the color is interpreted in gray values. But we're not going to worry about that now because this is just black and white. So we remove the color now. Next, we need to boost the contrast. Now, there's lots of ways of doing this. Now, if you're using photographs, you might want to get into some more of these advanced ways of doing it. But I think I can just do this through good old-fashioned brightness and contrast that works pretty well just so you can see another method I also like to use this thing called curves and what this does is it displays um, the contrast of your image this is my white value you can see it's over here on the right side these are my darker values and another way that you can do this is you can drag these bars around now, this becomes really useful when you're um, editing photographs, but it works really well for drawings too. And it's a great way to wipe out um, pencil marks. You know, you might have some like extra pencil marks in here, or smudges, or smears, possibly a coffee drip or two. And uh, it's a great way of just wiping out all those areas. And the more I drag this over, the more it kills all the gray areas and makes it pure white. And the more I drag this bottom bar over, the more it makes it pure dark. So we'll say okay. Um, something else you're going to want uh, when you're doing this kind of work, because obviously I can't see all the little details here because they're so small, is you're going to want to open up this thing called the Navigator. And so this allows me to zoom in and zoom out. So that way I can get into some of those little detail areas and um, more selectively colorize those. So this is a, a good start to your setup here. If this is in the way, you can just click that out. Um, another thing I want to do, or what I like to do, is I like to um, create some layers. Okay, And one way to do that is to go up into the layer button and then click new layer. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to color on the actual image. I want to keep my colors separate. So that way um, I can control them individually and I can turn those layers on and off. So like for instance, um, if I color right now and there's some different ways I can do that, I could just use a brush tool, that's one way. Maybe we come down here. Well, it's kind of like a nice gold color. And I'm going to want to make my brush a little bit bigger. Well, that's pretty big. Um, you can color over something. So like, let's say I am start color in here. I'm going to color, 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 color. And, you know, like right now, um, that's not looking too good because I didn't pay any attention at all um, to <laughs> the lines that I made. But it's kind of neat when it's on a separate layer like this, you have these ways of adjusting how the layers interact. So what I can do is I can then set this to multiply and it'll blend it into that bottom layer. 
So, you know, this is an approach. You know, this is a way that you can do this. And, you know, if you're going to get into some more of those details, um, you're going to want to get the navigator out. Zip in closer here. And then you can come in here and, like, kind of clean that up. And I'm using, by the way, a hard-edged brush. There's other types of brushes you can use. If you want to create more of a gradient, you can do that too. All right. And you can also soften the edge here. And they have some different like textures that you could add. Um, you can experiment with those things. I'm not going to do that right now, but just so you can see it, here it is. And then, of course, you can adjust the size too. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so I can get into some of these like tighter details here. And this is one way that you can approach coloring, all right? And so that just has to do with painting right on top of the image and um, adjusting the way the images interact by clicking the different layer styles. And there's other options in here too. You can experiment with some of these. That didn't do anything. Uh, let's try darker color. Uh, that's about the same. But multiply can work just fine. Okay. Another approach, one that I tend to use a lot more, and let me just turn that layer off right now, um, is I like to select areas. And so what I'll use is the magic wand, which is right here. And what that'll do is that will allow me to grab an area. So like I can grab this. Oh, oh you know what? I'm on the wrong layer. See, I was still on this top layer, so it grabbed the area that I had colored. Here, I'll turn on the layer again so you can see it. So you got to be aware of what layer you're on. Let me deselect that, and let me go back down to this bottom layer. And then what you can do is you can click on something. Like, see, I clicked on that little part there. If I hold Shift, can you hear me? Holding Shift. I can click another area, and I'm adding something to that selection. Click another area, adding to it, and we'll just color the foot of the bee here. And then after you have some areas selected, again, I wouldn't color on the background. What I would do is I would color on a separate layer. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. And then we'll pick a color. I don't know. Let's make it a pink. Maybe a little more red. Yeah, there. that's kind of a nice color. And we can go to our paint bucket now. So before I was using the brush. Now this is a paint bucket. If I click this, it will colorize just the areas I selected. So that's another way of coloring, you know, and maybe I over here and I'm like oh you know I'm gonna uh, color this too and so let me get back to my background layer use my quick selection wand click hold shift click click yep, click sometimes you might need to zoom in when you do this just select some of these areas here real simple way of doing some coloring. Let's get the other foot to move around here. I'm um, on a Mac at least. I'm holding down um, or I'm using two fingers to move around the composition. Get a few more of these areas. And we'll click that. And then let's go ahead and uh, paint that too. Give that a little paint. Give it a little color. All right, we'll just zip out again. Oh, oh, this little spot there. And then I can always turn my other layer back on, and you can kind of see how that's working. Now, something that you can notice though is because um, that yellow layer that I started with used multiply. When it goes over the pink color, 
it's going to start creating some other colors. It kind of is making an orange now because it's combining with that as well. So that's something to be aware of. It can actually be kind of a cool effect. Um, if you don't like that, well, not a big deal. I can go to my erase tool and go back to that top layer, the one that has the yellow, and just erase that right out. You know, that's up to you. Or use it. You know, maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to create a little bit of value in your picture. Okay, let's erase. Huh. Oh, duh. I'm still selected. That's why. Something else you should watch for. Sometimes you'll be using the magic wand and you'll forget, forget that you had selected something previously and there might be a little section over here that you don't see in your screen that's being selected. And so um, if it gets stuck like that, Always double check to make sure that you don't have something that's selected already. Okay, so that's kind of getting you started on some coloring. Now, here's another thing that is good to know. This is the color sample tool or the eyedropper. And you can always use this to go back to another color. So instead of going back in here and trying to refigure out exactly what kind of color you have, um, you could just go to your composition, click on the color when you're using this eyedropper, and now you can use that color again. And I can, you know, maybe do a little more painting here. Paint, 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 paint. And again, you can do a better job with this. I'm just doing like a quick thing here so you get you started in case you want to try out coloring a little bit. Um, it's also important. Now, see, I'm working from a scan right now. It's a little bit harder to work from a photograph of your drawing. And so the photograph you might have to do a bit more editing to really get the contrast that you need to work with. But if you have a scanner at home, use that. You go back to the regular eraser tool. Just want to clean up that little spot right there. And a little spot right there. There you go. And um, so like a way you could create like a gradient. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. Um, one way is I could color this on top so I'll make a new layer I'll go back to that orangey kind of tone I had before take my brush color around the edge here now I could use a soft brush right um, that would work really well the only problem is is it's soft all around and if I want the orange to be just on the outside to create like the sense of depth or color change, then it's probably better to do it this way. I could also um, use a selection tool, select around my area, and there is a gradient tool right in here that you can use to kind of digitally create the gradient. So now I have the orange value in there, or not value, orange hue. And I'm gonna go ahead and click multiply. So now that's blent in a little bit more. Then I'll take my eraser tool. Like I said, this is just quick, fun ways of doing um, some painting. Um, I will tell you, there's better ways to do all of this. Um, you know, I'm just showing you the quick way. I just want you to, you know, experiment a little bit or play a little bit, and I'm sure you'll find much better ways of doing all this. Okay, so I had that color in. If I want to fade it a little bit or blend the edge a little bit, I can use an eraser tool. I can um, move the hardness down so that's a softer brush, and then I can just erase the edge here, and I can create a gradient this way. Okay, that yeah, looks pretty good. So when you have the drawing the way you want it, and obviously I'm not done here, um, but let's say you're done or done for now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to save your file because this is all online, so it's not going to store anything for you. Um, you're going to go up into File, 
and then you're going to want to save it as a PSD. Now, a PSD is actually a Photoshop file, which will keep all of your layers. And when you're doing coloring like this, that's really important because it'll allow you to go back in and make adjustments and add more colors and continue your work. Um, if you export it as a JPEG, it's going to flatten it and you'll no longer have those layers. So it's important to save it as a PSD file. There it is. 12 megabytes, not bad. And then when you're done, and let's say you want to share this or put it online or put it on your website or do whatever you want to do with it, um, then you can export it as a JPEG. And I like to turn my quality up all the way. There we go. And we'll click save. And we'll say save. And here it is. So there is my final drawing. Um, obviously not done, but it's something. I'm not going to go through the whole coloring process of this picture but I thought this might give you a few tools that you could play around with and maybe add a little bit of color to your perspective drawings. Hope this was helpful, and you know, I hope you have a most wonderful day.